I was really gr glad when I saw Chris Van Fleet recently ask Dave Meltzer about a star rating system and what goes into it and why Kurt Angle's never had a five-star match. And Dave was basically being Uncle Dave. He don't fucking know. He, he, he couldn't really explain it because there's no real methodology or madness. It's just his feeling and his bias. That's all it fucking is. 4.75 stars is basically the same as five stars. No, it's not, Dave. Five stars is the same as five stars. And I, I understand. Every fan is entitled to their opinion. You are. I am. So is Uncle Dave. However, it is really being disconnected from reality to say that every opinion is weighted the same. To pretend like Dave Meltzer is just another fan with an opinion is objectively stupid. If you can't see the problem with that statement, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. His star ratings and his match rating system have had an oversized and, in my opinion, negative impact on professional wrestling. You have a number of wrestlers openly talking about wanting and craving that validation from Uncle Dave getting five plus star match ratings. The fans talk about it like it's something to be taken seriously. Give me a fucking break. Well, because it validates my own personal bias due to his fucking bias, it validates why I do what I do. You also got a frickin' promotion like AEW hyping up. Fucking five plus star match ratings from Dave. To say he's on the payroll without like actual evidence to support that is not beneficial, right? He acts like it, and, and believe me, he absolutely fucking acts like it. And if you say that Uncle Dave is fair and objective, you know you're a fucking clown. You know that's not true. There is no way you could look at his behavior, especially in recent years. You look at the whole punk versus the elite situation. That was not unbiased, fair, objective reporting in every fucking way. Even though everybody involved was fucking idiots, up to and including Tony Khan. It was amazing who was portrayed in a better light by Meltzer. But the whole thing about this bias is it's not because he's on a payroll. It's about Dave trying to justify his preferred style of wrestling. He's been waiting 40 years for an American company to do the type of wrestling that he loves. So, of course, he's going to back that and support that, especially when it's a number of his friends and close buddies that are involved in leadership positions in said company. And a lot of us, admittedly, would do the same. I don't necessarily knock him for that. I knock him for being dishonest about it. And pretending like that's not what's going on. I knock the Meltzer army for pretending like that's not what's going on. Let's be honest about it at least, right? Because you're talking about a match system rating that he's had in place for over 40 years. Let's look at some of these biases from the Meltzer star match rating system. Over 40 plus years, I think like 41 years now, he's given out a total of 228 match ratings of five plus stars. He did 24 of them in the 80s, 65 of them in the 90s. Somehow, apparently, the 2000s sucked because they only had seven. Well, thankfully, it turned around in the 2010s where they had 67. And my God, we have reached the greatest era of professional wrestling ever because in three and a half years of the 2020s, they already 65 five-plus star matches. That's absolutely not... Dave Meltzer's bias run amok. It's not him jumping the shark and losing his grip on fucking reality. None of those things. None of those things. It's got to be that wrestling is the best it's ever been. I mean, come on. You already know, by the way, that the two promotions with the most five star, star plus match ratings over 40 years are Japanese-based companies, New Japan and All Japan. You know that. That's where the joke comes from with Meltzer of, well, if that match would have been in the Tokyo Dome, we would have gotten an extra half star, three quarters a star or a star. And that joke, what makes that joke so good is because it's basically on the fucking money. Because that's what Dave's history suggests. I, he started really jumping the shark here, though, in recent years. We, if, if, again, if you, just because you happen to like what Dave likes as a wrestling fan, that doesn't make it bad. But to pretend like he's not incredibly biased and that his match rating system should be universally ignored, that is a problem. Because the top 11 wrestlers with the most 5-plus star matches, according to him, are all either J Japanese wrestlers 
or friends of his that have worked a lot in Japan, such as Will Ospreay and Kenny Omega. And guess who are the next two on the list after that? Oh, you got it. What's it like, Ric Flair? And then it's fucking Matt and Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks. Like, I could understand Ric Flair having like 12 five-plus star matches, even though he felt like in a lot of ways you watch one Ric Flair match, you pretty much saw them all in his career. But you could certainly say that about the goddamn Young Bucks. But magically, his buddies are near the fucking top. And magically, how about this? AEW, in four years of existence, when you talk about New Japan, they have the most ever five-star matches, according to Dave, in 40 years. That's 83. So a little over two a year, right? With a huge drought there in the 2000s for some reason. AEW, in four years of existence, now has 22. They are third on the all-time list. That's an average of over five a fucking year. How could anybody take this ass-hat star rating system seriously and not look at it for the biased agenda-pushing bullshit that it is? WWE, in the last four decades, according to Meltzer, has a grand total of 18 five-plus star matches, and several of which come into the past couple of years because they happen on NXT with guys like Adam Cole and Johnny Saneface or fucking Gunther Walter. Like, he'll make sure that those guys get the five-star matches. Fuck everybody else. So AEW, over the last four years, has figured out the magical formula. AEW, the past four years, has been better than the entire... Decade of the 2000s when it comes to match quality professional wrestling. Fuck is wrong with this picture? How can you not see that? It's a problem. Like I tweeted a day or two ago about how it's ridiculous that he's given AEW TV matches, like 10 of them, a 5 plus star match rating. And in 30 years, he's never given one of those ratings to Raw. 24 years, he's never given one to SmackDown. Of course, the Meltzer Magoo army comes back and says, well, there's a difference if you talk about what one values over the other. And again, basic comprehension is a problem for people that follow Meltzer, apparently. The point is, is at some point in time, you know goddamn good and well, WWE would have bumblefucked into a five-star TV match. You know they exist, even if they are rare and infrequent. I agree that it is, but that's still not the point. The point is, is this guy has jumped the fucking shark. And you're not calling him out for his bullshit. Because it's not building the credibility for his preferred brand of wrestling. It's making it look stupid. So let me get this straight. AEW. We talk about in four years, 22 five-plus star matches, and you know there's going to be more this year. <sighs> Savage Steamboat at WrestleMania 3. They couldn't get five stars. Brett versus Owen, WrestleMania 10. That wasn't a five-star match. Taker Mankind, King of the Ring 98. That wasn't five stars. TLC at WrestleMania 17. That wasn't five stars. Hogan Rock, WrestleMania 18. Nope, doesn't cut the mustard. HBK Taker at 25. Or any Kurt Angle WWE match or TNA match in history. None of those ever received a five-star match rating. But the Young Bucks versus the Lucha Brothers in a random fucking ass six-man or fucking tag match, whatever the fuck, on Rampage. That's a five-star banger. Bullshit. It's not even about opinion at this point. It's about bullshit. Bullshit. Some random fucking match and then Dave will talk about, well, things like the story and the finish matter. No, they fucking don't. Because so many of those matches that you give those five plus star ratings to for either Japanese wrestling or AEW, there's no fucking story there. And any story you claim that they tell during the matches is not really real. And oftentimes those finishes to the matches absolutely fucking fall flat. Because after you've done so much shit during a match, how do you top it at the finish? Well, everything was good with the finish. Well, isn't that the most important part of the fucking match? Give me a break. It's a miracle though. Oh my God. Will Ospreay. 
His favorite wrestler of all time has the most five plus star matches. Kenny Omega's tied for third. The Bucks are tied for 13th. That's absolutely a coincidence, right? After almost two decades in professional wrestling, Brian Danielson, the long, young lion, apparently, at age 42, has finally hit his stride at AEW, God damn you, and now has five career five-plus star matches, where he had zero the previous 20 fucking years. Brian Danielson! Brian Danielson! I get sometimes these young lions, it takes a long time for them to hit their stride. But Brian Danielson, give me a fucking break. Here are some people with more five plus star match ratings than Kurt Angle. Hangman Adam Page, five. Brian Danielson, five. Magically, all in AEW. John Moxley has five. All in AEW slash Japan. Mud Show Mox fucking has five. Ray Phoenix has nine. And blah, 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 blah. Dave claims he cares about storytelling, but Roman has zero five-star matches during his current three-plus-year title run. Meanwhile, John Moxley has had four such match ratings in the past 14 fucking months. Moxley! And on top of this buddy bias and this brand bias, and style bias, which is also evident. And again, if you can't fucking see it, you were just being dense for the sake of it. You were being disconnected from objective reality for the fuck all of it. What's even more ridiculous about it now is though in recent years, when he really jumped the shark, especially in the past 10 years or so, and especially the last four once AEW came into being, the idiot broke his own stupid rating system. Once you start giving out six and seven star ratings, your whole system's busted. Now three star matches stink, like that's how math works. I know it's a challenge for Dave, but three out of seven is less than 50%. That means that's less than the middle. That means it stinks. Four star matches are basically average. Five star matches are above average. Of course, Dave doesn't understand this. It says five star matches are great because math is fucking hard for him because this whole system is stupid. And all I want to see people do is stop validating this fool's rating system. Because it's not merited. It doesn't justify it. It's not justified. Depending on your political leanings, this should sink into you. He's either the Fox News for New Japan and AEW, or he's MSNBC. Depending on your political leanings, he's one or the other. But that's exactly who he fucking is. And it is time that we treat the frickin' match ratings that he gives as the irrelevant biased garbage that they are. I do. You should too. And anytime you see anybody trying to throw these out there as any type of like decent standard to file, follow and not call them out for the biased bullshit that they are, should tell you how seriously you would take that other person. He's entitled to his opinion. He absolutely is. But the way he misrepresents it as being objective and fair when it totally fucking isn't is bullshit. When you look deeper at the numbers and the mechanism of how his ratings have worked in recent years, you see just how obviously biased this bullshit is. And just because you may have a preference for J Japanese style wrestling and AEW, there's nothing wrong with that. But saying, well, because he agrees with me, that automatically makes it not bias. It is fair. No, it's fucking not. Be bigger than that. Be better than that. And wrestling needs to stop giving this guy the oversized and frankly undeserved platform that he's had over the past 40 years. Fucking never took a bump. Never actually worked in wrestling to any significant degree. But he's been able to milk people out of six-figure income for decades. And wrestlers today, promoters today, will hang on what Meltzer says. Can you fucking imagine that? For his biased bullshit.